Aquadvantage salmon is a genetically modified GM Atlantic salmon developed by Aquabounty Technologies in 1989. A growth hormone regulating gene from Pacific Chinook salmon, with a promoter gene from Ocean Pout, were added to the Atlantic salmon's genes Tillman, 2016, Bonda 2010. These two genes enable the GM salmon to grow year-round instead of only during spring and summer. GM salmon are a commercially competitive alternative to wild-caught salmon and to fish farming of unmodified salmon. The purpose of the modifications is to increase the speed at which the fish grows without affecting its ultimate size or other qualities. GM fish grows to market size in 16 to 18 months rather than 3 years. The latter figure refers to fish farmed Atlantic salmon whose growth rates had already been improved over wild fish as a result of traditional selective breeding practices. Topic: <laughs> Genetic modification Aquadvantage salmon were developed in 1989 by the addition of a single copy of the OPAFP GHC2 construct, which consists of a promoter sequence from Ocean Pout directing production of a growth hormone protein using the coding sequence from Chinook salmon. The continuous expression of this transgene allows the fish to grow year-round instead of only during spring and summer. The stability of the new DNA construct was tested, revealing no additional mutational effects during insertion other than the two desired genes. These GM fish were back-crossed a two-generation breeding protocol that starts by generating a hybrid offspring between two inbred strains, one of them carrying the mutation of interest to wild-type Atlantic salmon, and the genetically modified E01. Gene sequence was identical in the second through fourth generations, indicating that the insertion is stable. While wild Atlantic salmon Salmo Salar, have two sets of chromosomes, raised aquaadvantage salmon have three sets, i.e. a triploid. Induction of triploidy by treatment of eggs renders the fish sterile, reducing the risk of interbreeding with wild-type fish if any of the genetically modified fish were introduced into the wild. Production Aquadvantage built a 100-ton per year aquaculture facility in Panama. Topic. Concerns Aquaculture that uses conventionally bred salmon, mostly Atlantic salmon, cultivates the fish in net pens. In North America, this occurs mostly in coastal waters off Washington, British Columbia, and Maine. However, the application for FDA approval of Aquadvantage salmon specified land-based tank cultivation with no ocean involvement. To address the concern about biological containment, the FDA requires Aquabounty to take extra precautionary measures to ensure transgenic fish cannot get into wild fish population in the ocean Fox 2015, Bruce 2017. Aquabounty altered the fish to be only female and only sterile, the latter by treating the eggs to create triploid genes Fox 2010, Ben Fee 2016, rendering these females sterile. Male fish are created only for egg producing service, and are kept in secure, land based facilities in Canada. Muir 1999. Aquadvantage salmon eggs are treated with pressure, to create batches of fish eggs with three copies of each chromosome compared to two copies. Deployed. Any batch that contains 5% or more deployed fish is destroyed because these deployed fish are capable of reproducing. Animal Production FAO, 2018 There are serious ecological and economic implications occur when stock fish escape from ocean pens into native fish species ecosystems MAPES, 2018. The Aquabounty Aquadvantage triploid fish are also, higher quality meat because they do not divert energy to reproduction, as a deployed fish would, instead use the energy to grow after maturity Benfee, 2016. Aquabounty takes extra precautionary measures to ensure better security using physical containment to reduce even further any transgenic interbreed with wild Atlantic salmon Jeffrey L. Fox, 2010. The Aquabounty transgenic salmon are only allowed to be raised in two land bases tanks at two sites in Canada and Panama et al., 2016. The fact that Aquabounty fish eggs will be produced in a land-based fresh water research facility on Prince Edward Island in Canada, makes the cases that these Aquabounty salmon, are still salmon, and salmon hatch and develop in fresh water then swim to salt water to spawn when they reach adulthood b. Johnson, N. Johnson, 1993 so if eggs were to escape this facility, they would be unable to survive in the high salinity water nearby. 
These eggs are then shipped to a land-based aquaculture facility at high altitude in Panama near a river that drains into the Pacific Ocean. The facility is thousands of miles, 120 kilometers away from the nearest Atlantic salmon wild populations, Galagos, 2017, Upton, Cowan, 2015. It is here the eggs hatch and grow to market size B. Johnson, N. Johnson, 1993. Most of the water in the drainage river into the ocean is unsuitable for salmon to survive, and is constricted by dams that act as barriers. It is extremely unlikely that one of the 1.2% deployed fish ben Fee, 2016, would successfully navigate the dam barriers and survive the lethal waters and reach the Pacific Ocean, thousands of miles away Galagos, 2017, Upton, Cowan, 2015. Other concerns include the heath effects of consumers due to the potentially heightened allergenicity of the GE fish and the potential effects of the hormone levels in the fish Jeffrey L. Fox, 2010. However, there are no newly introduced proteins, fats, or any component different from salmon that has not been engineered Borison, 2016. The FDA has upheld that people with allergies to Atlantic salmon will likely be allergic to Aquadvantage salmon due to the similar species properties, not because it is genetically engineered FDA and that Aquadvantage salmon is as safe to eat as non-GE salmon because there are no significant food safety hazards associated with it FDA, 2012. Other human health concerns arise about the increased hormone content in the edible tissue of transgenic fish Green, 2016. .The growth hormone content in two groups Aquadvantage salmon and non-GE control are both below the lower limit of observed quantities, and there was no significant difference in the amount of amounts of estradiol, testosterone, 17 ketotestosterone, T3, and T4 between the two groups Food and Drug Administration Center for Veterinary Medicine Veterinary Medicine Advisory Committee, 2010. The Aquadvantage salmon showed statistical difference in the concentration of an insulin-like growth factor IGF-1 Food and Drug Administration Center for Veterinary Medicine Veterinary Medicine Advisory Committee, 2010, yet the amount of IGF-1 found in Aquadvantage salmon is similar to, or lower than, other amount found in other common animal products cows treated with growth hormones milk, cows not treated with growth hormones milk, organic cow milk, beef and cattle blood per milliliter Food and Drug Administration Center for Veterinary Medicine Veterinary Medicine Advisory Advisory Committee, 2010. An average adult male that consumes 81.7 grams of animal protein intakes 200 nanograms of IGF-1 per milliliter of blood. Consuming regular amounts of Aquadvantage salmon imposes no greater IGF-1 content than an average animal containing diet. Giovannucci, et. Al. 2003. The only notable difference between transgenic Atlantic salmon and the wild type is therefore the growth rate, with GM salmon reaching market size in half the time as conventional salmon Borison, 2016, Hafsa, 2016, Waltz 2016. Critics raised concerns about potential environmental impacts if these fish reached rivers or oceans. Modeled invasion scenarios in semi-natural environments suggest that GM salmon would outcompete wild-type salmon. However, William Muir, the researcher who developed the Trojan gene hypothesis frequently cited by critics of this salmon, has discounted this scenario, noting their sin of omission and describing it as an urban myth. His analysis indicates that the data conclusively shows that there is no Trojan gene effect as expected. The data in fact suggests that the transgene will be purged by natural selection. In other words the risk of harm here is low. Topic. Survival in new habitats Fish can learn to feed on new prey after leaving hatchery environments. These adaptations could pose a risk if GM salmon were to be released into the wild. The ability of GM salmon to grow faster does not necessarily mean they are preferentially preyed upon, and this leads to increased survival. In a competition scenario, such as a release of GM fish from a salmon farm into the wild, the GM salmon could initially outcompete wild-type salmon for food. This success would allow the GM salmon's greater survival. <laughs> <laughs> Rate of growth Aquadvantage salmon have the potential to feed more efficiently than wild-type salmon. This leads to an accelerated growth rate during their first year after hatching. These fish have the capability to grow 11 times faster than wild-type salmon. This characteristic allows GM salmon to mature more rapidly and gives them the ability to reproduce in less than two years about 700 days. However, studies suggest this accelerated maturity of GM salmon does not provide a reproduction advantage over wild-type.
Topic: Smaltification. Smaltification is the process of salmon adapting from freshwater to marine water. GM salmon can potentially achieve smolt size in only one year. This could allow aquadvantage fish to reach the ocean quicker. The ability to reach the ocean first could allow GM salmon to access more food with less competition from wild type salmon. Topic: <laughs> Allergenicity. Fish are one of the 8 food types that the FDA is required by law to treat with special care with regard to allergies. As part of the regulatory process, the FDA required data on whether changes occur in the kinds or levels of fish allergens such as parvalbumin in aquadvantage. The FDA reviewed data from the company and concluded, the allergenic potency of triploid arb salmon was not significantly different from that of sponsor-control deployed salmon. <laughs> <laughs> Swimming capabilities Aquadvantage salmon lack in swimming capabilities compared to wild-type salmon. Aquadvantage individuals consume more energy when swimming than wild-type salmon. This is most likely due to the type of muscle fibers. Aquadvantage fish's muscle fibers have a smaller diameter than wild-type salmon. Because the force a muscle generates is proportional to its diameter, the smaller muscle diameter of aquadvantage salmon produces less force than the wild-type. Topic. Reproductive competition Under simulated models, both precocial par and anadromous GM male salmon lack reproductive success and have a reduced number of surviving offspring. GM salmon's lack of fertilization success can be attributed to nest fidelity, quivering frequency, and spawn participation. Under simulated competition environments, 94% of siring occurred by wild-type salmon, while only 5.4% was attributed to GM salmon. This advantage allows more than twice as many wild-type offspring to be produced. Other characteristics that could cause wild-type males to be chosen more frequently could be the lack of growth of the kite, the hooked jaw of a male, and red coloration on anadromous males, which demonstrates sexual maturity to females. Using in vitro analysis, GM salmon's ejaculate was much less concentrated and had a lower sperm count and decreased sperm velocity, all of which can decrease GM salmon's fertilization success. <laughs> <laughs> Solutions Aquabounty addresses these concerns by producing only sterile female salmon by converting the eggs to having triploid sets of genes. Any egg batch with more than 5% deployed genes. Additionally, the fish will be raised in land-based fish farms with no connection to rivers that lead to oceans. <laughs> <laughs> Government regulation <laughs> <laughs> United States In September 2010, an FDA advisory panel indicated that the fish is "...highly unlikely to cause any significant effects on the environment," and that it is "...as safe as food from conventional Atlantic salmon." In October 2010, 39 lawmakers asked the FDA to reject the application. Other groups requested that the fish carry a label identifying its transgenic origin. Concerns included alleged flaws in sterilization and isolation, and excessive antibiotic use. On the 25th of December 2012, the FDA published a draft environmental assessment for aquadvantage salmon. The FDA also published a preliminary finding of no significant impact. A 60-day period for the public to comment was to elapse before the FDA reviewed aquadvantage salmon again, which was arbitrarily extended until May 2013. The Food and Drug Administration (FDA) approved Aquabounty Technologies application to sell the aquadvantage salmon to US consumers on November 19, 2015. However, a rider to a spending bill signed into law on December 18, 2015 by President Obama bans its import until the FDA mandates labels for the genetically modified product The decision marks the first time a genetically modified animal has been approved to enter the United States food supply. The decision came nearly 20 years after the company first submitted data to the FDA, and after they had raised 10 generations of the animals. The announcement released by the FDA states. 
Aquadvantage salmon is as safe to eat as any non-genetically engineered GE Atlantic salmon, and also as nutritious." One month later, language was introduced into a proposed federal spending bill requiring consumer notification that the fish is genetically modified. As of October, 2018, Aquaradvantage salmon is not being sold in the U.S. and the import of the salmon eggs from Canada to be raised at an Aquaradvantage fish farm in Indiana is prohibited by FDA. Canada On 25 November 2013, Environment Canada approved the product for salmon egg production for commercial purposes in Canada. In May 2016, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency approved the sale of the GM fish. In July 2017, Aquabounty Technologies said they had sold 4.5 tons of Aquaradvantage salmon fillets to customers in Canada. <laughs> 